Malaysia. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, good afternoon everyone. So I'm Dr. Natra uh, from the Faculty of Agriculture and I'm also the uh, project manager of this uh, Meta, Meta grant. So just um, some brief introduction. So this is actually a grant where it involves uh, quite a number of researchers, uh, not only in Malaysia, but also from our collaborative partners from different countries, where we uh, work together in terms of, um, you know, trying um, to provide awareness to the, to the community uh, on the conservation of mangrove through the use of technology. So this actually, this coaching session is actually one of the knowledge sharing program under, um, under the International IoT Challenge, uh, one of the activities um, uh, supported by this META uh, project. So to, today we have uh, Mr. Shamri, uh, he's from the Laura Net Technologies. We also have a uh, few other researchers. We have Prof, Prof. Adwati uh, and also Dr. Azizi, uh, Dr. Lokman, who's the other speaker? Uh, who also share uh, their, their uh, so basically the Shamri will uh, Shamri will give a talk on on the use of five G while uh, the other researchers uh, will will basically provide a coaching session. Okay, they also have uploaded uh, you know some pre recorded videos that can be that can be somehow uh, you know uh, watched by everyone in our Meta website. Okay, all right. So I, I I guess that's that's a short introduction from me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Natra. Okay, first of all, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? The poster of coaching session. Can everyone see? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hi, and uh, assalamualaikum, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. And today we are here for the uh, IOT coaching session with experts. Let me zoom a bit. IOT coaching session with experts. Okay. And we are having all the speakers for the IOT training module uh, for the Meta IOT challenge. And uh, first of all, uh, the speaker for today's session is uh, Mr. Shamri. Uh, he will be talking on the topic of IoT in industry, challenges and future prospects. And we also have uh, recorded sessions by uh, four speakers. The first one is Prof. Adwati Sali, uh, speaking on the uh, introduction to Internet of Things. And we have uh, Mr. Azizi Muhammad Ali and also Dr. Nauru Saleh uh, speaking on the topic of how to set up IoT data acquisition. And we also have Dr. Yu, uh, currently in UK. Um, he will, uh, he's speaking on the uh, topic of how to set up Laura Nodes and Gateway and also Pitland Data Analytics. Um, I assume that most of the participants uh, would have watched the recorded sessions on Meta YouTube uh, channel. So during the Q&A session later, you may ask questions based on the recorded sessions and also for today's sessions. Uh, so you just have to raise your hands or you can type in the chat box uh, if you have any questions. Uh, so, um, without further delay, I will pass to Ms. Samri to present this topic, uh, but let me stop sharing this. Okay, Mr. Shamri, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Shamir, are you presenting because we cannot hear you? Uh, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, dan Salam. a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting uh, me for this uh, session. Uh, so basically, uh, this is a opportunity. Uh, I try to do my best uh, on this sharing session on how our experience, uh, Lorana Technologies, to develop. Uh, solution, IoT solution, device from device into to the club and how to compete with international product as well. So it's very challenging task. Uh, we started in 2017, uh, Loranet. Uh, we decided to focus on LoRaWAN related technologies. Of course, uh, some of my, my uh, friend asking why you are so confident on 2017 to put the company name Loranet uh, tied to the technologies uh, that have a lot of competition in the market such as uh, C4, uh, ZB and MBIoT. Well, uh, basically, uh, uh, this is a little bit about our company before I go further. So we are based in Shah Alam. Uh, our core business is smart city and IoT solution provider. And we have a light soul uh, solution for smart city uh, in the market for uh, use by the local council and the PBTs. Uh. So uh, in 2017, when we want to start our product, development, uh, we thought the process is simple like this. Uh, maybe five components from the hardware device, device hardware, and then embedded programming. And then there is an IoT communication between device and cloud platform. Of course, we need to start. We start from scratch to develop our own uh, cloud platform instead of using uh, Google or AWS or Microsoft Azure. Uh, definitely, uh, by doing this, we we think that we are more agile or dynamic in terms of uh, implementation. So, since 2017, we're still in a work progress. Uh, the one that we thought this simple, actually, this actually is a huge, uh, huge uh, work need to be done not just that five simple step, actually more than that. So as for now, we're still there. We are still doing this improvise the uh, embedded hardware and the system it, from the device up to the cloud. Before I go further, I want to share a little bit of tools uh, for students perhaps uh, on this uh, today event, freelancers and startup to start with uh, for producing or become a product developer or solution developers uh, to offer to the market. <coughs> so of course, uh, I think everyone aware uh, since uh, 2005, 2006, uh, there is a lot of uh, affordable development platform for hardware prototyping and I think uh, the list is endless but here uh, I will highlight uh, one of the actually component that we use for fast prototyping is actually we are using Arduino now we don't need to go into the low level programming uh, but we just use a C programming then we can provide uh, do a prototype faster. I think it goes all to everyone, students, uh, freelance, and other startup company. Actually, they they can use this tool to provide fast solution to a problem to a client. So, of course, uh, from by using a hardware prototyping like Arduino, Raspberry Pi, uh, we go a bit further to design our own uh, hardware from PCB design into the uh, making our own products. 
So we use normally KiCad. KiCad is open source uh, PCB design software. It's very good. Last time we use Eagle, but uh, Eagle is a license based. Uh, then came KiCad and with better uh, better features and better ease of use. And we use KiCad to develop our simple or our our product PCB. Then uh, <coughs> after that, after we finalize the design, basically we send to JLC PCB for actually it's very good uh, solution provider. JLC, there is a lot other in the market, but uh, it's very cost effective. Even we can ask them to do a PCBA. So of course, uh, we use a lot of uh, tiny, tiny components uh, like a resistor, capacitor, and then a small uh, a 7D component. We can ask uh, JLC PCB to assembly for us. So it's very cheap. Uh, actually, you can start designing for product like, you know, you don't need to order 100 pieces to do this uh, PCBA. So JRC PCB going to assist you even you order four pieces of PCB. So all these tiny, tiny component, they're going to assembly for you. Then when they ship to Malaysia, you just uh, maybe uh, uh, assembly the uh, main component or big component that you can do yourself. Or if you can ask them to do everything and just send you a finished product. So these are good, uh, I mean, services available now. Uh, not like last time, like uh, 2000, below, before 2010, uh, it's very hard to find such services in the market. Last time we used a silver circuit uh, in Subanjaya for PCB prototyping. But now the company, I think, uh, already closed down or maybe then uh, after 2010, there is a lot of uh, this kind of company like JLC PCB a pop-up uh, provided online online submission of the uh, Gerber file, everything. So uh, actually, uh, I I have some advice to student basically on electrical electronic engineering. Uh, so if you study electronic, uh, actually industry aspect you can do your own uh, PCB and then uh, this is will help you also uh, if there is not enough uh, job in the market you can design your own products uh, then you can start what we call uh, offer the solution to clients so of course um, this is very important skill needed or uh, required for electrical electronic engineer to survive actually in the future. As we know, most of the manufacturing company already moved out. So our role is now more on the product design. So take this advantage, learn, learn uh, PCB design tool and software, and then develop your own products. Uh, if you don't have the you know the capacity to learn design your own PCB, read the data sheets you know uh, for IoT products. You can go to this Fiverr, it's very good uh, open uh, sourcing platform. Actually, you can order almost. You can ask uh, freelancers across the world uh, to do a PCB design for you. Uh, everybody can uh, subscribe and then can uh, what we call use this platform not just for PCB but others also like uh, logo design PCB uh, uh, artwork design web design also can and our experience with this fiber we have uh, attached and connected to a few of these very good international so-called freelancers that offer uh, services uh, for PCB design actually are very good uh, then it take like less than one week if we have uh, finalized our features that we want everything uh, 
they can implement or design the PCB for us uh, based on our enclosure that we decide or we share with them. Uh, less than five days, you can have your own PCB design uh, ready to send to JLC PCB for PCBA. And it costs you like 500 ringgit. It's not much. You know, uh, definitely you can search and uh, talk to which is, whichever the cheaper lah. Uh, this is another tool or services that we use for our our company. Uh, sometimes, if we not enough resources or to focus, then we outsource to this Fiverr platform. So for the, it's good. Uh, it's good. This uh, can be shared to the student also. You know, if they have a doesn't matter it's electric electronic or just a product design from computer science they have idea then you can go to this platform and give the features and what you want and they're going to make make it for you so uh that one we're talking about hardware and then here is a part that we also when we started we use this just a simple uh, topology or what we call it uh, IOT to the cloud if you can see from the slide actually we use a Arduino board uh, based on ESP8266 so we make a programming which is a there's a lot of sample code inside uh, you can google in the internet it's very easy to use this board ESP8266 so you see it's very cheap. I think you can get uh, with 10 ringgit. Uh, I mean in the Shopee or Lazada. And you can connect to any sensors. Then you do some programming and using a MQTT, what we call protocol. And of course, you need a broker, uh, what we call a MQTT broker. You can use also a free to use MQTT broker in the internet. Then from there, you can collect the topic using a node rack, which is you can install inside your uh, laptop, you know, uh, either Windows or Linux. Of course, uh, then you dump using node rack to your influx database, which is uh, time series. And then uh, we sometimes use a open source Grafana dashboard for visualization of the collected data even for this meta project uh, the display part is done using a uh, grafana software for the dashboard so this is basic uh, building block for our what we call iot implementation you need a device uh, you need a protocol connect to internet and the communication mean uh, you can use a uh, 2g 4g or even you can use a uh, uh, lora one uh, technology to send this, the data to your to the cloud and the easiest way to do this collection data translation is using a node rack uh, it's open source also then you can dump into any database that you're familiar with and then from there you can collect the data to the Grafana. <coughs> so this is all about I mean, uh, the from device to the cloud. I think uh, of course to to implement IoT, people think like you no, know, you need to have all these uh, skill sets. But definitely all this information is is uh, available in the internet sorry for that so, okay uh of course over the time uh this we have developed uh, our own iot platform uh, for smart city so we give the name like solution uh, which cater for this few services as for now so like traffic light environmental sensor and then streaming of uh, analytic cctv to the platform Uh, of course, uh, we are platform provider. We have a partnership with manufacturer of uh, street light 
manufacturer uh, LED strip light. Uh, mainly they are player for past like 20 years in the market selling uh, LED uh, street light LED and the uh, normal LED. So there is a need now uh, since 2019 the requirement to implement uh, IoT into a smart street lighting. So we call it smart street lighting. Uh, technology uh, from actually in the market they they use a lot of uh, a lot of other technology for wireless communication mostly uh, 2G 4G uh, LoRaWAN and ZigBee. Uh, but uh, our partner um, uh, decide to go with us and to promote uh, LoRaWAN for intelligence lighting. So these are the features actually on the software and the hardware actually both uh, you need to come out. Uh, so this uh, smart feature actually uh, offer control and monitoring. Definitely that's the most important thing. And then do analytics. Uh, to recommend to the maintenance team for uh, action need to be done. Part of it actually, uh, the control features enable the street light to be controlled on off and dimming to save uh, energy. This is uh, the hardware that we developed. Uh, basically, uh, previously when there is a small volume, actually we customize our own firmware uh, through OEM partner. So they provide the hardware, but uh, we develop, we customize our firmware. But uh, recently, I think we have a lot of <coughs> requests and requirement for the devices, this device. So we implement our own hardware design and firmware. Of course, this is take a lot of uh, effort. Uh, it's not just uh, one prototype, then we settle most of the, uh, so, I mean, I mean we, we have the group solution. Uh, we have about 12 iteration actually before we, we come up with our final design and offer to the public or to the customer. Then we go for certification uh, with a uh, serum to get a question to use a LoRaWAN uh, device in Malaysia. Uh, of course, this gateway, LoRaWAN gateway, uh, we have tested many gateways in the market. We do not develop the LoRaWAN gateway uh, because the volume is not much. And then uh, we adopt uh, our partner gateway from overseas. But uh, what we do further, actually we do, we go for uh, certification for usage in Malaysia. This current installation uh, of smart lighting in Cyberjaya, I would like to share uh, with uh, audience. Actually, uh, we would like to offer to the audience uh, to use a LoRaWAN network available that are maintained by us for Majlis Kebanan Sepang uh, for any community-based use case uh, that can be implemented. And we would like uh, to offer this, uh, what we call collaboration for any interested party uh, to start developing some solution for community in Cyberjaya. This is how we install the gateway uh, in Cyberjaya. Actually, this gateway is a temporary uh, deployment based on project. But uh, later part, we're going to redesign the gateway location to cover, to best cover the whole area of Cyberjaya for LoRaWAN network. For example, on the luminary control for lighting. Uh, we do asset monitoring for clients for their feeder pillar of street lighting. And the same platform also offer uh, the IS based uh, display based on open street map. Uh, this uh, screenshot actually for JKR Electric Slango for their traffic light feeder pillar or traffic light monitoring. 
So a part of the cloud that send data to the cloud and then this how we massage data and we do analytic and we further upgrade the modules and application such as uh, maintenance and inspection. Uh, of course, this part a lot of uh, we use a, a programmer web full stack developer for this application. We also have partner in traffic light, uh, mainly from uh, local manufacturer Dynatech and PPK. Uh, they are in the market since uh, I'm in university, especially PPK. So actually, there is more traffic light manufacturer, but these are the two partner that currently uh, connected to our platform. This example on how the graphical interface for JKR Selangor for their traffic light total about 400 plus. A uh, big quick one, um, yeah, GIS, same. Uh, this is the display of the asset management and monitoring. This is a real time traffic controller information, which is give the detail of the uh, which junction or phase uh, are currently green and then if the, the block of a green color actually is the loop detector and then the signal shows that car is waiting on the side of the next junction this data actually is very massive uh, we need to update uh, the, the, the controller in the junction update every second uh, definitely we cannot use a lora one uh, this this traffic light uh, application we use a 4G SIM card to update data to the platform to the cloud, and we do a uh, we do a collection of data for future. They're going to implement a machine learning on the best setting for this traffic light. As for now, most traffic light in Malaysia are still using fuzzy, just to share fuzzy logic for the implementation. We also uh, have a solution for our partner to bring uh, analytic of uh, video analytic to our platform. Definitely, many technology have been used. Uh, this is actually from Cyberjaya, I think. Yeah, under Cyberview. Energy monitoring also part of our solution uh, that we can offer. Actually, this is pretty straightforward. You collect data from a uh, energy meter from the site, and then we translate the data using a simple RS four eight five communication, and then we send to the cloud using five G or four G. Sorry, maybe future will be five G data center solution. Uh, one of for our one of our client. We also offer from the platform environment environmental solution to collect data from sensors. Actually, when you're talking about IoT, this is where uh, industry cam comes in and offer solutions. Start from the hobby, and then uh, of course uh, the sensor that we, we 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 offer actually have nine parameters. It's expensive a bit. But it's very uh, what we call uh, outdoor as a rugged sensors that can stand can stand the outdoor environment. As for now, our client uh, in we have for a client uh, my uh, local council that are using our platform either smart suite lighting, smart suite lights, some environmental sensor. We have uh, a lot of requests for other services such as. Uh, flood monitoring. Uh, we do have some POC project for uh, emergency button for public in Cyberjaya. So actually that's why uh, we we offering to partners or to individuals that have uh, some use case that we can try to implement together for sustainable smart city using a uh, Majlis Sepang Bandar Sepang Lorawan Network available in uh, Cyberjaya. 
Uh, we have we have started uh, before the I think uh, before the IoT have been used. Uh, of course, our partner uh, also from university uh, helped us uh, to explore this technology. Uh, last time they call M to M, machine to machines, uh, wireless sensor network, uh, and now this the term coin is uh, IoT. So this on the precision farming smart agriculture uh, from 2012-2016. We have project with UPM uh, under the uh, special grant from uh, uh, NICT. Uh, this is for the peatland monitoring. We also involved in the reforestation monitoring with UPM as well. Uh, we have some project in 2017 uh, for mangrove monitoring in Sabah Bernam. Uh, if you can see the picture, actually, is this is the when we install it is uh, the tree. The tree is just planted, or and then the picture on the bottom right side is the latest picture on 2021. You can see how, how much this uh, tree has been grow. Uh, it's a good experience for us also. Uh, we have a lot of, we install a time lapse camera on this uh, site, and it's very interesting actually. But of course, uh, the, 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 the picture is about 10 gig now. It's a lot actually. Uh, if you want to go through with the picture, actually, it's take a long time, even we are thinking of how to implement the AI you know, to see any special event from the time lapse uh, picture that we take every five minutes. Uh, we have uh, four years of uh, time lapse image on this side. <coughs> this on the 2016, actually, this project work, uh, has been uh, nominated for United Nations Awards. Um, yeah, we are actually the men behind the scenes uh, to help Ericsson on this project. Of course, uh, they extend the uh, opportunity for us uh, to implement IoT in Philippines uh, in 2018-2019, actually. Uh, we go there a couple of times. We store the same sensors and the same setup in uh, Subi Bay. Uh, near Manila, about 200 kilometers from Manila. Um, it's very interesting uh, places. It's a it's an island of uh, mangrove. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the picture of our engineer checking the system. In in industry like uh, other industry like geotechnical, uh, we also implement what we call IoT uh, sensors. So method of uh, transferring all the data is depend on the location. Uh, like uh, we have a slope monitoring and then river monitoring, and also some bridge monitoring. Mostly, uh, of course, last time we use M to M. It's very uh, wide implementation on the industry side uh, for IoT and a lot of opportunity. Last time the sensor is a, uh, of course the challenge, uh, the technology is not really there. Uh, most of the place is not covered by uh, GSM or 2G, 4G network. Uh, what we do last time before LoRa came, LoRa one technology available, uh, we use a walkie-talkie uh, to send data uh, five kilometers away using a, what we call a radio modem to convert data from uh, digital 1010 to sound or analog and then we pump into walkie-talkie uh, mic and then we send downstream and now over the other side uh, we, we collect the data back using another walkie-talkie and convert the data from sound to digital then we send over uh, 3G, 3G uh, gateway
2019, we do a maintenance for this plus highway. Uh, actually, it's a rain gauge and weather station for slope monitoring for plus highway, north south plus highway. Part of it, uh, actually, uh, we are uh, part of some project by MTDC. Uh, this is an uh, implementation of pilot smart factory in Sudan. Uh, we send our good engineer and our local engineer to Sudan to help them to implement smart factory uh, in 2019. So what we install actually a device that collect uh, energy information uh, from the machine about 300 machine inside this uh, factory so we collect and we display the information and into the manufacturing information execution system of course it's a part of the it and then using some uh, for for them to decide efficiencies of this uh, manufacturing process. Next. Yeah, I think my slide is finished uh, for the sharing. Uh, I think we can open to any question session. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Aisha? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Shambi, for the presentation. Uh, we can see that uh, from the sharing that Lorana Technologies PLT have provided um, services uh, for the IoT industry, such as uh, asset monitoring, smart traffic light, uh, geotechnical monitoring to monitor rivers, um, slope, and also bridges. Uh, and they have projects in uh, Philippines and also in Malaysia, in Sabah Penang and Raja Musa Forest. Okay, uh, for now we have come to the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, you can uh, raise your hand uh, using the button. Uh, uh, I have one, Aisha. Raising hands. Yes. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? I do want to hear before I leave for uh, another engagement. Um, Cik Shamri, if you could um, highlight what is the challenges, what are the challenges that you have encountered while deploying all these WSN and IoT projects so far? Because we can see that you have been involved for so long already, almost five years. Um, when when IoT was still known as uh, WSN, <laughs> so uh, if you could highlight from industry point of view, what are the challenges that you have encountered? Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Adu. Uh, basically, uh, the problem uh, yeah, that I think uh, the most important thing is about the communication. Uh, that. Uh, what, what uh, we use for collecting data. As I mentioned earlier, last time there is no LoRaWAN. Uh, we have ZB last time, uh, 10 years back, five years back. Uh, so uh, the distance is limited. Uh, then we need to resolve uh, into the walkie talkie type of uh, device. You know, it's very huge and bulky implementation and solar. It's very solar uh, power hungry. Uh, and then uh, came LoRaWAN. Uh, we I see the size of point that can do this uh, wonder. Actually, you know, sending the same data but using a battery operated only. So these challenges uh, have been, I mean, solved by this uh, LoRaWAN technology, and then it's opened up to many opportunities. Other than that, uh, we we have a developed a product like 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 solution uh, into the market since 2017. Of course, uh, as a local player, we develop our own from scratch. There is a competition from a product from uh, international, uh, like especially on the smart street lighting uh, from Philip uh, product developed by uh, Europeans. 
and then we have also to compete a very in, with a very low cost product from China itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very challenging because uh, especially uh, product from China, they come all the way from China using a Chinese cloud, uh, Chinese dashboard. But it's very good, uh, honestly, I tell. Only the selection of technology is wrong. So lucky we use Alora One when we started. And most of China product, uh, example, are using ZB. Since the beginning, I think. So they, they are selling the product to Malaysia through the manufacturer. Uh, but be not, uh, actually, uh, our uh, the, the manufacturer LED, of course, they have no choice. They are looking for most, you know, like product that, you know, can, can uh, low cost. Like. So we compete a lot and we lost most of the time. Uh, 2017, 18, 19. Uh, somehow because we, we just started, started to be our track record. And then we, we don't spend our, our, our resources on the certification because it's expensive with time. So most of the time we compete with Philips uh, solution on the smart, smart, smart lighting. They have a very good uh, certification and have everything, you know in terms of resources also. So definitely it's a very challenging industry for smart street lighting. But lucky, uh, I'm, I don't tell that uh, actually we, 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 we got, I mean, our success is still in the process of, you know, improving our services and product, even our pricing, you know, to, to, to compete with the international products. Uh, only, uh, what we found actually, what we have extra actually the support and services, which is uh, local. So, of course, from two partner of LED, we become seven now. We have seven partners. So they already some of these partner already implement international product, especially from uh, China. Then their experience, uh, I mean, on the services and support uh, make them decide to use a Loranet solution. Alhamdulillah, of course, there is a long way to go for us. But if you ask me truthfully, the challenging is actually to be a product and uh, can compete in the market. It's not expensive also. Actually, it should be affordable. And then we are still in debt process to improvise thing. Yeah. Okay, I answered the question. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Shishambri. Thank you. Thank you, Shishambri. Uh, let me see if there's any questions now from the audience. Okay, we have uh, from uh, Mr. Rahimi Rahman. Uh, Mr. Shami, I have a question uh, regarding the protocol that can be used for LoRa. Based on your slide, it uses MQTT message protocol. So my question is, MQTT protocol, a uh, fixed protocol that can be used along with LoRa, or is there any other protocol that can be used? Uh, okay, MQTT protocol is introduced uh, by IBM. It have been open source for others to use, and then. Actually, it's a good uh, protocol. Actually, there's a lot of other protocol for communication, like COAP, but the, the application side, actually the adoption is uh, a bit hard, but MQTT is widely used uh, by even your WhatsApp, WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp application, by Facebook like button, all these is then uh, they are very fast and very good for low latency, uh, for low, quality networks. Even uh, in LoRaWAN application, uh, from, from the device to cloud, uh, actually uh, they are using mostly on LoRaWAN stack, uh, on the radio stack. And then uh, uh, actually the collection is up to gateway, is a radio LoRaWAN. From the gateway to the cloud, mostly are using MQTT or UDP. 
to send the data. So, uh, ability is good technology. Uh, actually, you can try yourself because you can download all open source open source tool uh, for to try this. Um, and it's very good for like 9.6, 64K uh, quality of network. They can still can send data. So this is why uh, I think MQTT is the technology that going to be can, that, that we stay for many years. I think so, yeah. Okay, uh, for the next questions we have uh, from Dr. Natra. Uh, she said, I have come across an article stating that 5G ele electromagnetic radiation could be harmful to living organisms. How true is that? Uh, okay, I'm not an expert on 5G uh, actually, but uh, based on the international, uh, all this, uh, we heard there is a hope on the internet about this 5G. Uh, on the scientific community, I think it has, it's well proven, although it's almost the same as 5, 4G, 3G. Of course, there is a radiation, but the limit on the transmit power already defined by uh, international community uh, for scientific. So I don't think it will affect much. Even if you're talking Wi-Fi also, uh, there is a lot of you know harm if you use a uh, to transmit at higher higher power. That's why the MCMC and CRIM comes in to check all these devices, the Wi-Fi, the 4G, and phone, everything to comply with the power rating recommended by uh, scientific communities. So it goes same for the 5G. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shami, for answering the question. Is there any more question from the audience? If there's no more questions, uh, before we end our session, can all of the audience turn on their video because we want to take a group picture? Oh, wait, I have one more question. Okay, thank you. Shamri, do you think a people, you know, a person like me who don't really know anything about, you know, um, IoT sensor, do you think I can learn? I think, or is it too, too late? <laughs> no, I think uh, even, uh, I think uh, those time, like year 2000, uh, when I was in university, mm -hmm. there is no internet like today. Uh, in, or no sharing of information like today that you can Google it's like in one second you have the method and solution. You can use a YouTube a channel to learn and then uh, the device now nowadays is I mean very it's very affordable for new 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 beginner or learners. You can buy the embedded hardware development kit for 10 ringgit which is in 2000, it cost you few thousand to buy some uh, uh, device, uh, hardware development kit. So I think with open source movement, uh, open source software and hardware, all these things make possible for every, everyone. Even we have a project with our alumni, like uh, MSI Taiping, uh, our school. So. Uh, we, we, we teach a student from uh, form, uh, form 4 to form 5. Even uh, Lorane also have also collaboration with Malay College, Kuala Gansa, uh, to teach uh, their student from uh, form 1 on the IoT until uh, form 5. So we have always this program continue. Even if you know uh, uh, Malay College have Lora 1 gateway in their place installed on the tower. So you see, so there is no, uh, no barrier to learn mm -hmm. with this course and then free information, free, free, free video, learning video or courses in the internet. I think you can, uh, Dr. Natra, don't worry. I will help also, inshallah. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, everyone, please turn on your video for the picture session. Get ready. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, let me see this first. Let's take another one. One, two, smile. Okay, thank you for joining this session. Hope it's an uh, uh, informative session for you, uh, especially for the participants of the IT challenge, for you to develop your own uh, IT solution. If there is any more question, you can always email the latestjangkang20 at gmail.com email. We forward the questions to all the students. Thank you. Thank you. We have the, yes, yes. Do, do we have the Meta IoT Challenge participant here in the meeting, in the meeting room? If there is also a question for the, we have here Inci Azizi, Dr. Lokman, and also Dr. Liu. So this is your chance also. Can we also ask question, right? Mr. Azizi, Dr. Lokman, and Dr. Liu to you. Are you still here? <laughs> sure, sure, no problem. If you have any questions. Oh, yes, yes, they're there. Yeah, there's uh, Mr. Zili, Dr. Lokman. Hmm. Uh, speakers for the IoT uh, module. So I'm opening also the question, you know, uh, if any question from the participants of Meta IoT Challenge. All the trainers are here, so this is your time to ask them. Are you all doing well on your project uh, of developing the IoT solution for the Bengo? Yes. Are you all okay? <laughs> How many percent uh, are you uh, in the progress of uh, your project right now? Are you happy or no? no. <laughs> By the way, Dr. Lokman, GSZ, has anyone approached you? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a no, question. No. Has anyone approached, uh, you know, the three of you in terms of, you know, learning? Or, or maybe they know already because some of them are engineer, engineering students. Mr. Azizi and Dr. Loman, has anyone from, from the challenge participant approached you? Uh, so far, uh, not, so yet, so far not yet, Dr. Uh, so far, not yet. All right, okay. If there is a, a if someone wants to approach, are, are you available or? Uh, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, okay. So let me know. Uh, you know, they're quite quiet. I don't know if they're still in front of their screen or not. <laughs> they're all quiet. Inshallah. Yeah. I hope everyone is doing okay. Because we are, you are going to pitch the project this coming December, right? Yes, on the 15th mm. December. Okay. Okay, then if there's no other question, I, I just would like to thank again uh, Mr. Shamri, also Dr. Lokman, Mr. Azizi, Dr. Liu, Prof. Adu uh, for having this coaching session uh, you know, uh, for us. And also thanks to the moderator, uh, Aisha, okay, for, the, for moderating the session. Uh, you know, absolutely. Okay, so I'll see you in the next session. Oh. 
Salam, hi, may I know if I may the possible need to please a slide or we also need to pay any paperwork. Uh, we are we are actually uh, it depends on you. Okay, we don't really restrict participants in terms of you know either they have to come to, with a prototype or slide. It, it it depends on you. Uh, uh, you can you can just present anything. Okay, but hopefully it's normal lah. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you again. See you all. See you. In the next session. Terima kasih ya Cik Shamri, Dr. Lokman, Cik Azizi dan juga Dr. Um, Liu. Uh -huh. Alright, okay, nanti kalau saya nak belajar boleh belajar kan? Tapi saya memang... Boleh, boleh, lah, boleh. <laughs> Tapi kena <laughs> start lah, kena start. <laughs> okay, alright. Terima kasih banyak ya. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih.